hey guys what's up welcome back to another video so guys as you all have requested i have come up with this video and in this video uh, i'll be sharing with you the full flutter roadmap and how you guys can uh, begin your journey with flutter so this video is for everyone for those uh, who have who are just beginner uh, with flutter and also for those who have already have some experience in flutter to basically make the path more clear and also uh, to keep some things in mind uh, which you you which might be useful for you guys so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want more videos like this and also to like this video if you found it helpful so uh, let us get started with the roadmap so first of all the tools and prerequisites so basically what language to learn for for flutter so as you guys all know that flutter uses uh, flutter is basically a framework and it uses the dart programming language so in case uh, you don't have any prior experience with uh, basic programming or maybe you are from non computer science background then uh, what you can do is you don't have to specifically learn dart just make sure that you have you know some basic basic programming and also you need to uh, know uh, some object oriented programming also so for that for learning the object oriented programming i recommend you uh, to start with the java programming language because you know if you uh, you are building android apps then you will be using java at some point uh, on the development stage and it will also give you much more uh, flexibility and freedom to work with other libraries other packages or maybe to create your own so for that just uh, begin with object oriented programming um, with java if you can and just uh, learn the basics you don't have to go so much deeper just learn the basics and also it will be helpful if you uh, learn the stack data structure of course it is not compulsory but uh, it will help you a lot in your journey with flutter and also with app development in general so in case you are not a beginner and you have experience uh, in coding with any other languages like uh, java c plus plus c sharp or maybe javascript then you don't need to learn sp uh, specifically Dart uh, for Flutter because uh, you already have the experience working with maybe working with classes, functions and also these are basically the same and there might be some differences in the syntax but that you can adjust so uh, if you have experience working with programming languages then you can just uh, uh, start with flutter and you will learn uh, the basic syntax of dart in flutter itself so you don't have to learn uh, dart separately so yes so uh, after that well, the most common question is which id to use so for the id i would recommend and downloading android studio downloading and installing android studio because uh, we you know once you set up the app development environment in your uh, computer you need um, many more stuff like the android sdk the android emulator or the android cradle and stuff so this all these things already comes bundled up in the android studio so if you just uh, download and install the android studio you will have everything uh, in your computer which is re required to get started with uh, as a as an app developer so if you don't uh, if you don't find android studio convenient or if you don't like to use android studio just install it just install all the packages and you can uh, sh uh, switch to visual studio code uh, which is basically much more lighter and simpler and also you can customize or modify it in uh, in many ways like so uh, just uh, for the convenience for your convenience because uh, if you do not download the android studio and if you like uh, set up uh, it directly in visual studio code then it might be a bit difficult because you have to install the packages one by one right so you have to install the android sdk separately then you need also need the emulator so you you need to install the emulator separately and uh, much more uh, other stuff so uh, to make it less complex and to keep it simple you can just install download and install the android studio where you already have these packages 
then uh, you can do the coding and do the development work in the visual studio code id so i hope that's clear and after that where to start uh, with flutter so basically in flutter uh, we start with uh, in flutter everything is and everything is a widget so uh, the whole uh, the whole uh, sections of your uh, app is a widgets uh, and there is a widget inside the widget so basically what i mean to say is that and there are two types of uh, there there are two types of there, there are two types of main widgets in your uh, application so the first one is the stateless widget and the next one is the stateful widget so what do we mean by stateless and stateful so with the name i think you have got a hint that uh, if you have a flow of data stream like uh, if uh, if you you have like uh, some changes in the data stream and you want the ui to respond to such uh, changes then you can use the stateful widget because in the stateful widget it basically has a state so suppose uh, you have uh, some you uh, you want the ui like you you want the color to change or maybe as uh, some cards to swipe off based on uh, the changes in uh, the data which you are uh, fetching from a database or maybe from an api so for that you will uh, build the whole ui uh, inside this stateful widget because uh, what you what this stateful widget implies is that once the data is changed it will change the state also so if it changes the state then the ui will also change accordingly and uh, respond to the changes in uh, basically the incoming data right so so for that you can use stateful widget and if you do not want uh, the ui to respond to changes in the data stream then you can use stateless widget because it is uh, much uh, simpler and also if uh, if the ui part is like static like it does not change uh, throughout the lifetime of the app then it's fine to use a stateless widget and regarding the assets of course you if you want to use images funds or audio and video file then these are these are assets of in your application right so you, you can make a separate assets folder in your main directory to store them or maybe you can fetch them from the internet so these are some things uh, which you need to uh, start uh, which you need to work from the beginning itself so basically the widgets the stateless stateful widgets then the assets also and uh, this the sta static ui part is basically the ui which uh, usually they are uh, they aren't uh, scrollable like they do not have um, they do not have the dynamic uh, the dynamic flow or the dynamic uh, movement uh, in themselves so basically these are this can be categorized into like a text button images which consist of the view and the view group so the view group basically it uh, it acts as uh, like uh, the it acts as a parent widget for other uh, for other features uh, or for other views like the text button so suppose in a view group we can have container row column stack expanded constraint box uh, etc so basically um, as you guys can see we can have a button inside of a container or maybe we can have a container inside of a row or vice versa so view group are those which contains a group of views so uh, yes so i hope this is clear and these two things that uh, that's the view and view group are basically static okay and uh, coming to the dynamic ui part there is list view grid view so basically it is uh, the the widgets which uh, we can scroll right so inside the list view we, we can have containers as a set of containers like we can have uh 10 to 20 containers and then we can uh, will be because uh they will not fit in a single view right so we need to scroll them so uh, these are the part of the dynamic ui so i hope it is clear because the first thing you uh, when you begin uh, with fl with flutter app development you just need to work with the ui first and uh, 
that's how uh, you can get started uh, with uh, flutter app development and after that uh, you need to take care of the database because once you have the ui uh, it's basically useless if you do not store in anything or if you do not purchase data because once the user opens the app uh, he can do many changes to it like uh, it can it can maybe contain some list of to do's or maybe it ca it contains some um, important data that the user wants to uh, store in the app and maybe later on open the app again and uh, check the data so if you do not store the data then it's basically your app is basically useless unless and until you are like uh, fetching it uh, fetching the data uh, from some api and just uh, showing the the uh, user some updates and also in most cases you are going to need a database of uh, in your flutter application and although uh, there are ma many many options to use but uh, there is one uh, more convenient option uh, which is the firebase database so in firebase there are basically two types of database so one is cloud firestore and the next is real-time uh, firebase database so you can use any one of that because uh, because uh, you do not uh, need to do, like uh, you don't have to uh, know sql and many other like it will be convenient if you know sql or if you have prior experience working with databases because uh, they this will also help you creating some schemas which you may use or maybe working with some other packages uh, apart from firebase but for convenience uh, for beginner purposes you may start with firebase you may check out uh, the firebase uh, official documentation uh, and they have a specific or uh, special documentation with flutter how to use firebase with flutter so you you can go to the website and you can just check it out and regarding the links i'll be sharing this presentation um, in my telegram or some other channel i'll just put the link in the description box so in case you want this presentation you you can just go to the link and get the presentation right so after that uh, if your client suppose if your client wants uh, the app, if your client like uh, for whom you will be building the, the app if they want to store the data locally then you can use sqf flight but for that you will uh, basically need to have some experience working with uh, databases working with S sql specifically so sqf light is uh, just the version of sql light it's uh, the flutter version basically and you have to uh, like uh, install it as a as a package uh, you need to add it in your popspec.tml file and that's it for the database part so first you you can try firebase and if you have some prior experience with database databases and with sql then you might uh, check various other options right so the next is the most important part that is the state management so if you are just beginning with flutter then uh, it is not compulsory but uh, basically if you want like uh, to pers pursue a full-time development career with flutter then or if you want to build uh, some app then you need to know about the state management right so at the beginning it is not that much required but uh, slowly slowly uh, as you gradually uh, develop uh, more future features on your application and uh, if you want to make your application much more useful then you will it's compulsory to uh, do proper state management to have a proper state management system right and especially for large scale apps so uh, for large scale apps it is very important to have state management and as a beginner you will just have uh, the set state options so you you can just use it and of course it will be uh, inside the stateful widget so that will get your basically get your jobs done and for uh, for more complex applications to develop more uh, like uh, some apps uh, which might be like for lar large scale purposes or which you might want to like uh, put in the app store or maybe you want many users to use it then you can opt for uh, third party or ex external packages uh, or dependencies 
uh, for state management so the first one is the provider package which uh, you can just go to like the pub.dart website and there you you can find these packages so this all these packages are based on some uh, like uh, all these packages are different basically and you can choose any one of them ba based on your con convenience so if you have uh, worked with react earlier uh, previous day and you have also experience uh, with uh, the redux state management in react and you, you flutter also has a package for redux which you may find helpful or may find convenient to start with for a state management and there is also the block package which is based on the block pattern and the mobx and there are many other package in flutter for state management you can just uh, go to pub.dart uh, slash packages and you you will be able to find many of them and you you can select one based on your convenience and uh, based on your experience also so the next part is networking so uh, you you can check out the flutter official documentation uh, for networking and also how to fetch data or to send data uh, to the uh, to your servers basically how to communicate with the servers uh, from flutter and also in networking you will be working with restful apis json data parsing you might want to uh, show some data you might want to represent your data uh, in your app and with cool uh, user interface so suppose that the data basically will come in the json format and you need to uh, you need to use it in your application and uh, show it in the user interface and you can also uh, set various parameters to your data like you you can search for some specific um, some specific uh, filters or specific query uh, you can run basically specific queries in your api to get a specific results like uh, if you want something uh, if you want something above a certain price right so you can also set the filters you can link the filters with a uh, text text field so if the uh, user in enters a certain uh, parameter in that te text field it will basically be appended to, uh, with the api url and then you can uh, fetch and uh, show the data accordingly so it might sound a bit complex because the networking comes in a very later stage and once you begin working with flutter once you begin working with the databases you will basically have uh, the idea of how you can fetch data or send data or how to display data in your application and if you have prior experience working with restful apis like uh, in web development or uh, maybe uh, in some many various other projects then uh, you will not find this complex or difficult uh, to work with the APIs in Flutter. And do make sure you check out the document documentation because these are Flutter official documentations. So uh, you will get the basic idea of like how to uh, use APIs in your application. So guys, uh, let us now have a look at the version control and the native in integration part. So uh, as you guys might be aware about uh, git and github because uh, these are most commonly or widely used uh, version control systems so basically when you develop an app so uh, the the initial release of the app is not the final release right your app is going to have uh, different versions so um, in version one maybe there were some feature features to be to be added so you release the, the second version of your applications where you add some features or uh, maybe you uh, uh, fix some bugs and uh, so on you may have different versions of your app applications that are like uh, version 1 version 2 or maybe version 1.1.1 .1 or version 1.1.2 and so on and uh, to publish your app on the play store you you are going to uh, need to have uh, Google Play developer account so initially you might be uh, you uh, may have to make some make a small payment and then after that you will be eligible to upload your applications in the Play Store so basically once you upload uh, the 
application it will be under review for like three to four days and if they found that the application is perfect or fit for the play store then it will be uploaded and you can uh, then ask your friends to download that app application and also if you are making the app for a client then you can just uh, share it with share the application with him in the apk format because then um, he will be able to use the app in his um, install the app in his own uh, phone and i uh, use it accordingly and also for uh, for if you are building an ios application definitely flutter is across platform framework so basically it works for the same code works for both android and ios but still you need to have some knowledge about uh, xcode swift or objective c if you want to uh, make uh, the app uh, native to ios devices and also to upload the uh, app on the apple app store and after that uh, what are the other things which you can do you you can basically create a github profile in case if you don't have so just create a github profile and just um, maintain it like you can showcase various projects like suppose you have uh, built a certain application and uh, you want to you want um, other developers to go through your code and to see what what are the features or uh, how you have built the app then you you can uh, just uh, push the code into the github repository and make uh, it completely open source so in that way people and many other developers will learn that you know uh, how to build apps how to build cool or complex applications and from there on, there onwards they might contact you uh, f by looking at your github profile so definitely having a github profile is very much useful and as a developer you should have a github profile and also make sure you uh, maintain it properly and you have some code and other things uh, to showcase on your profile and the same goes for having a professional linkedin uh, profile and also uh, in your linkedin profile you can share uh, some demos of your application like if you have built a certain app you, you you can record it and maybe upload as a post on linkedin so that people uh, who are not that much aware of the code or technologies may be able to see uh, how uh, what kind of application uh, you have developed and also make sure you make a uh, relevant connection so suppose if you are a flutter developer then you can make connections with other developers also and also you you, you can make connections with some business owners or maybe uh, some uh, potential clients which from which you may, may be able to get some work or maybe get a job and after that it is very important to have a cool portfolio website because uh, now uh, nowadays we have seen that many of these big big websites may go down and uh, not recover like it recently happened with facebook like facebook was down for uh, around six to eight hours so basically you uh, may you uh, can have your own website so in case like your github profile gets deleted or your linkedin account gets banned then you will be able to uh, you uh, you will still be able to showcase your applications or you will be able to showcase your apps or other projects in your portfolio website so make sure you just have a simple portfolio website uh, where you can um, where um, uh, your potential clients may visit and may have a look at uh, um, your work and also do make sure that you have the links like the links to your linkedin profile or maybe how to contact you or maybe to the github profile uh, in your portfolio website because from there the uh, user will basically uh, um, have a call to action and um, they, they will be able to contact you from there itself so these are the these are some important to do's or three to do's which i have mentioned here so first have a github profile and maintain it and then also uh, you should have a linkedin profile and also a, a portfolio website so make sure you uh, you are being able to have uh, these three things uh, in order to get your first client or maybe get more clients and so on so coming to the end of this video so basically if you have any doubt or if you uh, are if you need any resources for uh, learning flutter then make sure you just google it out or maybe you can uh, find it uh, find many tu 
tutorials on YouTube. I have also some, uh, I have also many projects related to Flutter in my YouTube channel. So just go and check out my other videos. Like I have some projects based on a uh, cool Netflix app and also some, uh, also one project on the e-commerce application. So these are beginner friendly uh, projects, right? So if you are a beginner or you fa if you have uh, just some basic knowledge about Flutter, you, you can go to these videos and also I have also made the co code open source. So in the description, you will be able to find the code also in my GitHub repository. So make sure you go and check out all these projects, various projects I have in, in my channel. And also there are many other channels uh, and many other videos uh, which will show you how to uh, build uh, projects from scratch, Flutter projects from scratch. So you, you can go there and uh, check those out. And also, uh, you make sure you have uh, make sure you uh, follow the Flutter official documentation because they might have some more updates regarding what some changes on Flutter, and also uh, they 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 may ha have some like uh, some important links to other uh, to other websites or tutorials which may be helpful for you and also if you are on facebook or medium then make sure you join the communities you you can join the facebook groups of, of flutter developers and also on medium you you can uh, you you can follow the flutter community and also in linkedin also there are various channels which you may join and also follow them and with this guys i hope you found this video helpful do subscribe to my channel and do like this video if you found it helpful and if you have any comments or any uh, feedback then do mention it um, in the comment section of this video and i'll put the link of this presentation in the description description section so make sure you check it out and with this guys i'll see you in the next video till then uh, stay safe and keep learning